What's up everybody, John Charmijo here, I hope everybody's doing good and well and stuff. I got an album review to do for you, and I'm going to show it to you right now. This is the new album from the band Disentomb, entitled Misery. This is released on New Standard Elite. Now, if you're not too familiar with this band, they are based out of Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. And the best way to describe the sound of this band would be a very dark, brutal, and apocalyptic style of death metal. My first introduction to this band was back in 2010 with their debut full length entitled Sunken Chambers of Nephilim. That was a really impressive debut, I must say. I really liked the artwork that Marco Hassman did. I really enjoyed the, the lyrical concepts, and I also enjoyed the, the unique vocal varieties and the strong songwriting aspects of that album. Very impressive debut. But... Ever since that debut's release, this band has undergone somewhat of a physical and musical transformation over the years. Somewhat of a, a, a growth spurt of sorts. Maturity, in a way. And the maturity was shown in the couple of tracks that were released on their 2012 promo release. Uh, it basically was a, a sight of things to come. For this band musically. Um, a different change in direction, better production, better songwriting, and it only made me wonder what the future for Disentomb was going to be. And that future was with the announcement of their sophomore effort entitled Misery. I, I must say, this album has had somewhat of a really awesome promotional campaign going for it. Um, misery is coming, so to speak. Uh, a lot of talk, a lot of ideas of what the future was going to be for the, for this band's sound. A more funeral doom inspired sort of idea. Uh, earthquake inducing slams. I mean, just a lot of great promotion being used for this album. And once I heard the open one of the opening tracks of this album, An Edifice of Archbestial Impurity, I was floored. I was floored. I, I, I was just left speechless listening to that track. I had no idea that all these years of, of, of waiting would lead up to a brand new revitalized band. And that track was just so sensational. The speed, the dissonant guitars, the high guttural vocals, the, the, the fast drumming, it was just sensational. And it made me wonder what the rest of this album was going to be like. And now here we are with the sophomoric effort from Disentomb entitled Misery. It's 10 tracks, and it clocks in at around 32 minutes in length, so this is going to be a short and sweet to the point sort of record. I mean, cherish what little time you have to spend with it, because I think it's going to be one insane thrill ride. I mean, once you get fully immersed into the listening experience of this album, you're going to be in for something completely astonishing. This is what a transformation of a band can sound like and be well executed for. Misery is well worth the hype, the anticipation, and the waiting. I think this is how you do a second album properly. Uh, musically, this is such a domineering record because you have the instances that just really reek of traditional brutal death metal, but then you get the twists and turns that you don't expect or see coming. Uh, more to speak on that in a second, but let's get into the to the to the guitar work here. It just sounds so marvelous. I mean, hearing it on the open on on hearing the opening riffs of the intro, then going on to an edifice of archbestial impurity. It's just so sensational how the how the riff work is being handled on that on those particular tracks. But then you get it onto later tracks like the Promethean Altar and Pyres Built from Their Severed Wings. I mean, it's just so amazing the guitar work that's being done here. So dissonant such a very beefy tone going for it i really love the way that the, the that these riffs sound and they're just so amazing to listen to and then you get to a track like megaliths of despair that's where this band engulfs an entire almost change of genre of sorts they almost venture into funeral doom territories and it's just so crazy they become Instead of a brutal death metal band, they become a death doom band. Hence the the term funeral slam. It's just so amazing to hear the riff work being done on that track. It definitely has that almost evoking Thurgathon sort of uh, inspiration being done with the with the with the riffs on that track. It's just so marvelous. 
But overall, the, the guitar work on here is just so immersive and so dissonant. I love the way that it's being utilized here. Even when it comes to this band's, to this album's uh, bass tone, this is a more guitar-driven sort of record, but the way the bass is being handled here, I think it's done very naturally and very crisp. It's a very well-audible tone, and it definitely leaves a nice, smooth balance for this album. Um, that's one thing to point out about the instrumentation here. Every instrument on here, to me, sounds and feels very natural. It doesn't feel processed. It doesn't try to feel overproduced or overmixed or anything like that. This is definitely what a natural-sounding death metal record can feel like and be like and i definitely think that this uh, that this sound and this production and mix is very well worth the worth the wait uh, moving on to the drums this guy is such a great drummer he delivered a really good perf he's been delivering great performances with this band but here on misery we get him at his absolute best here from the fast blasting to the to the to the double bass, to the drum fills, just the overall creativity of his drumming makes this album just so m amazing to listen to. I mean, once again, going back to the track Megaliths of Despair, we once again get into the funeral doom sort of territories that this album is um, presenting here. And it, it comes to deliver a very methodical, well-balanced sort of drum performance. I mean, just the snare hits on there just sound amazing. The double bass sounds really awesome. And just the overall natural delivery of his drums sounds so phenomenal. I love what he's doing with his drum kit here. Uh, it can be slow and methodical at one point, and then it can be just straight out neck-breaking fast. That's the kind of drum performance he delivers here with uh, Misery, and it is just such a marvel to listen to. And uh, moving on to the vocals... I never knew that this guy could sound so insane. I mean, this guy literally has a, a massive stage presence. I mean, he looks like if Barney Greenway of Napalm Death collided with Popeye to merge into some very swole, menacing, and intimidating front man. And he is such a joy to watch on stage because I've seen live footage of him just tearing things up on stage. Most notably, I want to say the Hammer Sonic Festival in Indonesia. Just his stage presence, his, his just manic presence just sound, looks insane. But vocally, it's just so jaw-dropping to listen to him do his vocal style the way that he does. He has a very unique sort of style for the genre. Uh, very uh, guttural, not your typical sort of guttural. It's a high-pitched, uh, raspy sort of guttural sound, and I definitely think he d delivers that kind of vocal performance tremendously here throughout this entire record. His wordplay, his delivery of the lyrics, it just really sounds amazing. And even when he gets to, to a more deeper vocal register, I think this is where Jordan shines the most. Once again, going back to the track Megaliths of Despair, just his vocal delivery on that track is just so marvelous. Once you get to hear his lower register sort of growls, I just think it's so awesome. And then you get to a track like uh, Forced Adornment of the Funerary Crown. You get to hear none other than Trevor Stranad of the Black Dahlia Murder on that track. I think him and Jordan complement each other quite well when it comes to the, to the overall vocal styles. They're both completely different, but I think that track is just very entertaining to listen to. And not only that, but for the fact that Trevor is a huge fan of underground death metal and pretty much is a very supportive person when it comes to to disentomb i think it's awesome that he appeared on this album but once again going back to jordan i think he delivers an amazing vocal performance and i definitely would say this is one of the best vocal performances to be heard this year there have been a lot of great front men delivering awesome vocal performances for brutal death metal releases but i would say that misery is one of the top tier ones um and lyric-wise, I think it's a great piece of, 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 of stuff to read. I think the lyrical content is awesome. Going to tracks like Vulture's Descend, and then tracks like, um, once again, going back to Megaliths of Despair, where there's not that many lyrics, but yet everything has and does deliver a very important impact of sorts. So, overall, if you're a fan of Disentomb, if you are a fan of the first album, 
be prepared for something completely new and different with uh, Misery. I think this is a sensational and marvelous record. I love the, the maturity of the songwriting. I love the music. I love the delivery. I love the vocal styles. And not to mention the artwork is really awesome too. If you happen to buy a copy of this album, definitely get into it for this really beautiful artwork that's being displayed within the booklet. It is worth it to just own it for this beautiful artwork. It is amazing stuff. So if I had to pick any favorite tracks, I would definitely have to say um, An Edifice of Archbestial Impurity, Abominations Created Through Divinity, um, The Promethean Altar, uh, Megaliths of Despair, one of the best songs of the year, and um, Forced Adornment of the Funerary Crown. So I'm going to leave you some links in the description box as to how you can get a hold of this album and listen to it. I will link you to the new Standard Elite Bandcamp page where you can stream this album in its entirety, hear it for yourself, and be your own judge as to whether you think it's worthy of being purchased or not. Buy it digitally there if you care to. It definitely is helping out to the band and the label more than you know. And I will also link you to the web store where you can purchase a physical copy of this album. It is available on CD, and there are bundle packages available, t-shirts, hoodies, flags, you name it, they have it. So I'm going to show you the album again. This is Misery by Disentomb. This is released on New Standard Elite. Buy this, and I'm going to give this a very strong 9 out of 10. This is one of the best brutal death metal albums of the year. I don't know if it'll be on top of Gorgasm, because I would say Gorgasm is still the best one, but this is getting right near close to that. So support Disentomb. I'm going to conclude this review. Thanks all for watching. Thanks for joining my channel, and until the next time, Army Hope out.